How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the Drinks Your Repair channel. As always, I'm Dan. Hope you had a wonderful Christmas. I'm actually on the Christmas break at the minute, but I thought I'd just pop in quick to do a video for you because I've got something cool. I've got these replica World War I boots and we're doing a bit of a conversion on them. We're turning them into mountain hiking boots. It's gonna be a quick job, but stick around, see what it's all about. So once again, welcome back guys. Hope you all had a wonderful Christmas. Let me know what you got up to. I do enjoy seeing what you're up to in the comments. I had a nice time. I'm just having a bit of a break now to recharge, get ready for all the work in the new year. But let me tell you about the job. The customer has sent in these, uh, they're, they're not real, they're replica German World War I boots. And I, I believe the customer uses them for reenactments and they're pretty cool. But obviously they're not the real deal. They've been manufactured in such a way that they are just a copy. So we've got to see what they're like as we take them apart. But we're not really taking them apart that much. We're not doing a full resole. What we are doing is installing these metal cleats. Okay, so it's like a long nail with a funny shape on each end. And they're going to go on the edge of the shoe. So we're gonna have cleats or studs around the outside of the shoe. And that's what they used to use for, you know, walking in the ice or mountain climbing. However, as I said, these aren't quite the real deal. These aren't quite meant to go in. So I've had to do a bit of brainstorming with this and uh, Steve at Bedo's Lev Works weighed in on this. We put our heads together to try and think what we could do. Mainly the nails on these are way too long because if we were to put those through, it just doesn't work. It scrunches up the leather and especially around the toe, it's gonna be a real mess. Now the customer has quite kindly given me a, uh, diagram of how he'd like the cleats installed which is which i believe is how they are to be authentic this is how it would have been before but with the cleats that we've got it's not feasible um you know essentially one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve of these cleats around the toe i think we'll be lucky if we can actually fit six around there so we'll just have to do the best we can but i'm waffling on let's get started Okay, so first order of business, we've got to remove these old hobnails because we need to remove this top leather sole. It's a very thin sliver of leather and we want to put a thicker sole on. Why do we want to put a thicker sole on? So if we're looking at how these cleats are gonna work, the side of the shoe, it goes that way. This little hook on that side is gonna sit over the top of the welt and then this wafer there is going to squash flat against the leather sole, but it's quite thick um, and it needs to scoop over that exact thickness. So we need to put a thicker sole on. I'm gonna measure it just right and then it should be the right size. Right, I think once again, we need a bit of the old jerk off stripper. It's gonna help loosen up these studs and the leather and we can peel it all apart. Okay, let's get pinching. So we just get under one edge, pinch it and then scoop him out. Pulling teeth, this. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Oh, get in there. Wait a minute, my girl. Wait a minute, my love. When I saw Volbeat last week, Wembley in London with the boys. Who else is a Volbeat fan? Such a good gig. Ah! <laughs> Come on! All right, so with any luck, we can just peel this top leather sole off too. No stitches on the top sole. Okay, so I feel quite silly because all those top nails are just held on on the other side by rivets. So I could have just peeled that all off. Bloody replica crap. All right, so for our new sole, I've just got some leather sheeting because I don't want it stamped because I want to keep with the authentic look for the boot. And it's just about the right thickness. I've measured it up. So we're going to end up with the, the right thickness sole in total. Oh, 
right, so here we go. It's time to glue our soles on. So we've got our sole section cut to size and boots prepared. So we're just going to get our cement on. Got the, uh, the messy glue brush of death. Actually, let's just clean that up. We can't have a chaotic brush. All right, so let's get cement on our boot and our sole. Let's get sticky. Okay, so we'll let it dry. I think I'll give it two coats because we're not stitching it and then heat it up, activate the glue and stick it together. Right, so just while that's drying, the next order of business is these cleats here. The spike on it is way too long. It's actually quite soft metal. So I've already tried hammering it into the leather and it just bends. Also, we're gonna have overlap issues. They're all gonna cross over each other. So what we've got to do is snip it in half, like I've started with this slot here. Snip it in half like that and then make a new point on it and then it should be okay to pop in. Freeze, sucker! Okay, so there's our sole on, and you'll have seen just finished around the edge. And we usually do that at the end, but done it now because otherwise we won't be able to color it when we've got our cleats in. But before we get all the metal work on, I'm just going to put a bit of color on the sole to make it look vintage. dark colour. So sole on, put a bit of cool colour on it. When you see little dots like that after you've dyed a sole, it's usually because there's some lacquer on it from the factory and you just can't get around it. But that was the easy bit done, easy peasy. Now onto the metal work, which I predict to be quite annoying. But let's give it a go anyway. Alrighty, let's see how easily I can show this to you guys. So let's refer to our diagram. Now the customer says basically our segs are going around in pairs 
until we get to the toe area. So I'm going to have to be a bit tactful here. What I'm going to do is just line up our first cleat where he should go and just put a bit of pen mark on where our pin's going to go in. And then what we need to be careful is that these wafers don't overlap. So I'll get them as close as possible. It would definitely be easier to do this one at a time without trying to show you guys on the camera. But when he's there, we've got a rough idea. Second pen line. Right, so the next order of business and problem that I came across when I tried it earlier is when we hammer this pin in, I don't know how they did it originally, but this certainly doesn't work. As soon as we hammer this pin in, it bulges the leather out on the top doesn't work it looks terrible so what we're going to do is just grab our drill and just make some tiny little pilot holes to get it started and make some room in the lever for the pin to go in so what i've done is put some paper down because we're going to be hammering the shoe against the counter they're on nice and solid we then need to flatten the wafers against the sole so if we just put the underside of the cleats on the last it'll give us a nice solid surface to cinch that down against and okay i don't think that's bad for a first attempt so let's go all the way around So that's our first little bit around the toe. I actually think it looks pretty cool. It's going pretty well. Okay, there we go, looking pretty heavy metal. So now we've got to move on to putting the regular hobnails in. Okay, so we've got our little bag of hobnails that the customer has supplied. Now these aren't the usual ones that I would have used. So they've got a very shallow and thick point to them. So I think we're going to really struggle to get them into the leather, but we'll give it a go. So if we refer to the almighty diagram again, see what we've got to do get them in the correct pattern that the customer says is appropriate to be an accurate replica and will he go in no <laughs> so first thing we do is just try wetting the leather and see if that makes it easier Here's a little tip for any of you guys that might be adding hobnails to a boot. If you try and hammer these in and you wet the sole and you still find that you're struggling to get firm contact and hammer them in, check the inside of the boot. Check there's not a big squashy spongy insole inside because then you're not going to get contact against the metal last and that'll be your problem. These don't have one in obviously. Okay, there we go, rock and roll. So the last little bit we've got to do is actually try and get some of the cleats around the heel. I'm not quite sure how it's gonna go, but let's give it a bash.
Right, so there we go, and it wasn't actually as bad as I thought, but we've got all the lead work on. Managed to get cleats around the horseshoe heel and some studs and all the metal work at the front. And one thing's for sure, they definitely look a hell of a lot different with this on, but what I'm just gonna do is do a bit of TLC, put some leather conditioner on the shoes because it wouldn't be a shoe repair video, Tree shoe repairs video without a bit of TLC. Okay, so this is super simple TLC. I'm just using the Saphir Cream Universal just to condition and hydrate the leather. We're not gonna put any color on it because the whole point is to keep these looking vintage and uh, you know replica boots like they're supposed to. So you can see it's faded at the top. We don't want any color, but just a bit of conditioning cream. The Cream Universal isn't going to hurt. Of course, you can get the Cream Universal along with any other Saphir products on our online shop, drinkshoerepairs.com. So you can give your boots or shoes a bit of TLC as well. Okay, so once that's dry, I think it's job done. So there we go guys, job done on our replica German World War One boots. And I'm pretty happy how this came out. It was certainly a fun job, certainly a very unique job. And a lot of you guys always ask the price. Please don't ask me to put a price on this because it's so bespoke. And I just did it for a bit of fun, to be honest. But I can tell you it probably took me about four hours in total. A lot of work when you're doing this metal work, iron work sort of stuff is very time consuming because it's very fiddly and you have to be careful of what you're doing to get it right. But anyway, there we go. I think the customer is going to be very happy with them and he can go and use them in his reenactments. So that is the end of the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I always say if you want a shoe repair doing, get in touch with us via the website, trinkshoerepairs.com. But please don't ask me to do one of these again. But anything else, get in touch. And remember to check out the website, trinkshoerepairs.com for any Saphir products you might want to buy. And if you made it all the way to the end of the video, hit like, really helps with the channel. And if you just happen to be new, stumbling across this channel, welcome, make sure to subscribe, I'm doing new content all the time. But that is the video, thank you guys so much for watching. It's New Year's Eve right now, so I'm out of here. Hope you guys have a cracking New Year's Eve as well, and I'll catch you in the next video. Cheers.